Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. Now, we have a great fight coming up on the 10th of June, this coming Saturday. It's at uh, Madison Square Garden and it is between Josh Taylor and Teofimo Lopez. And you can be forgiven for thinking, well, already, because this has kind of crept up, you know what I mean? Like, time goes quickly these days. Maybe, you know, maybe the older you get, the quicker it goes. I don't know, but... I think this is a great matchup because you've got two fighters who, at one point, certainly in Taylor's case, was considered uh, or were considered, um, you know, if not elite fighters, and certainly nudging that elite bracket. And Taylor, let's make no, no mistake about it: in eighteen fights, he unified an entire division, the the super lightweight division, and that's a magnificent achievement for a young Scottish fighter. Um, began with the McGuigans. Fell out with him, as a lot of fighters seem to. And then then he teamed up with Ben Davison as his trainer. Um, was closely affiliated with MTK. We know what happened with there. Uh, but really did look like an absolute killer. And was on his way to becoming um, probably Scotland's, regarded as Scotland's best fighter, perhaps. I know we got Ken Buchanan, who's a great, great fighter, and a couple of others. But, you know, he was getting there. He was getting there. And he beat good men to to unify that the, those belts. He beat um, in his last but one fight. He beat uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez. That was a unanimous decision. Floored him twice in rounds uh, six and seven. Um, showed a lot of skills there. An awful lot of skills. Beat Regis Progre, who is still around. Is still very much a threat. Beat him on a majority decision. Fantastic fight. Um, and then it was, was it Ivan Baranchek? He won the, his first title, Ivan Baranchek. That was the IBF title. I don't know the order in which the others came. But he was flying, absolutely flying. And um, I don't know how old he is now. I forgot to look. I think it was, was he 30 now, something like that? Um, late 20s, 30-ish. But he was, it, what a fantastic career he's had. In only 18 fights, he unified. It was such an immense achievement. And then came the perfect example of why you should never place any active fighter in historical perspective until their career is over because he met Jack Catterall and Catterall completely unheralded beat the beat the pants off him and it was it to this day I watched boxing for 40 50, probably getting on for 50 years I'm in my mid fifties now, so I started watching. I was young. I probably, I probably watched it for about forty-seven years, let's say, for the sake of argument. The first fight I ever remember watching was the third Ali Ken Norton fight. So that'll give you some idea of the of how long I've been watching boxing. And that that um, split decision win over Jack Catterall by Josh Taylor is one of the worst decisions I have ever seen. And Cat, uh, Catterall should, by all by all rights, be the undisputed super lightweight champion. He floored um, Taylor. The best, the kindest I can be to Taylor is to give him four rounds. So 8-4 to Catterall. But that's pushing it. 9-3, I think. I think I've, I've watched this fight about half a dozen times now. And I think the first two times I watched it, it was 9-3. And I deliberately tried to give anything that was kind of 50-50 to, to Taylor. And no, 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 no. It was it, it was so obviously a clear cut victory, not even not remotely close. And there are a few people, including Taylor himself, who say, oh, you know, I want a close decision. It could have gone. on." No, it couldn't. You were flat out beaten. OK, and if you if Taylor seriously believes that he deserved that victory, that it was a close fight or anything, any of that nonsense. I'm sorry, but either you're completely delusional or you're lying through your teeth. OK, because you, you got flat out whipped. And Catterall was, was essentially robbed in the very real sense of the word. I don't mean necessarily brown envelopes handed to people behind other people's backs. I'm talking about morally, you know, in, in, in a sense of justice, he was he was he was robbed. He was robbed. Now, does that mean that Josh Taylor is a bad fighter? Of course not. His talent didn't suddenly evaporate. I don't know why he was so bad in that fight. Maybe he didn't click with Ben Davison, who he's since left. Um maybe he's struggling with the weight, which is always, there's always been the rumour that he struggles with that 140 poundage. Um, maybe he took Catra lightly. I don't know. I don't, maybe it was a, a con com combination of things. I don't know. I don't know. But um, 
since then, since that fight, he has not fought. And that fight was in February of um, last year, 2022. So it's, it's going to be 16 months before he gets in the ring, rough, roughly, near as damn it. Um, now, apart from that, the inactivity, actually, if you look at his record, continues because the... Um, the Jose Ramirez fight was in 2021. In um, it was actually on my birthday, so I remember it was 22nd of May, 19, uh, 22nd of May, 2020, uh, 2022. So this upcoming fight with Lopez will be only the second fight he's had in the last two years. That's not good. That's not good activity. And to come off such a bad performance and what is basically, for all intents and purposes, a defeat, and fight someone like Teofimo Lopez, who has a lot of talent, and he's younger than younger than um, um, Josh Taylor, although Josh Taylor isn't old, Lopez is 25, uh, former um, unified, are we going to say undisputed? Probably not, because, it was, you know, uh, yeah, no, all right, we'll say unified, he held the IBF, WBA and WBO titles at lightweight, um, beat Vasily Lomachenko, beat him easier than Devin Haney beat him, let's put it that way, um, knocked out Richard Comey in two rounds, which was a brilliant win. Um, he beat Nakatani. That was a unanimous decision. Nakatani at the time had a lot left, pretty much over the hill now, but, you know. Uh, good fighter, good fighter, Lopez. And, again, seemed to be heading for the stars. But then, what happened to him in 2021, November 2021, he bumps into George Cambosis Jr. and, and another rank underdog and clearly loses and... Thank goodness, thank goodness, even though unbelievably it was a split decision. I don't know how the hell, this was another obscenity. Um, it was a split decision victory for Cambosis Jr., but Cambosis Jr. won that fight, for Christ's sake. I mean, he won it. I mean, at least, unlike the taylor Catterall fight, at least um, Teofimo Lopez had some success. He did floor Cambosis in one of the rounds, I think it was round 10, um, and, you know, there were rounds when he was exchanging, and but... I think it was pretty clear cut. Cambosis won that fight. Okay. And suddenly, so he's had his bubble burst. So these are two fighters. Over the last couple of years, I've had their bubbles burst. And so that this is what makes it so fascinating. It is, why even bother ignoring the cliche? It is a crossroads fight. So, who's going to win? Well, I think... Whenever I do a prediction, I always assume that people come in without injuries and making the weight okay. And that's that's what I'm going to do. But we can't ignore the fact that Taylor in the past has struggled with the weight. I'm going to assume that he makes the weight okay, the 140 poundage. Um, but nevertheless, there is a possibility that he would have struggled. Lopez, on the other hand, is coming up in weight. He has fought at 140 before beat Sandor Martin, again he was on the floor in the second round, and I think, I actually think Martin floored him twice, because I think, it was it the fifth round, sixth, seventh, eighth round, so, oh, I can't remember which one, but he, he caught him with another check left hook, I think, I think the first knockdown was a check hook, and then he caught him with a second check hook later on in the fight, and I thought floored him again, and the ref didn't call it, so I don't think it was a kind of a poor performance by, by Lopez against Martin, although in fairness, Martin is a difficult guy to look good against, that was a 10 rounder, and Lopez won a split decision, Prior to that, Pedro Camper, he did him in seven rounds. Camper had a flashy record, but I think it was 34, one and one or something. But, you know, it kind of flattered him. But he's not a bad fighter. It was an OK fight for a comeback after the Cambosis fight. But at least he's had a couple of fights at 140. Um, and at least he's had a couple of fights since the shock against Cambosis. Taylor hasn't had any fights. None, none at all since uh, being defeated by Catterall. And like I said earlier, over a year out of the ring. So, let's look at the styles. Um, Taylor, very much, you know, lovely skills, tight defence, very much a box fighter, moves his feet, you know, steadily and quite swiftly towards you. Doesn't mind putting pressure on you, but can box on the back foot as well. Times times you very well. You remember against Ramirez in his in the fight that won him the, the fourth and final belt. Um he timed Ramirez beautifully with counters and put him on the floor twice. There was one when we put him on the floor with a counter and um, it was in the corner. It was in one of the corners. Lovely, beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, can be outworked. Josh Taylor likes to likes to be quite economical. Can fight when he needs to. Look at the pro-grey fight. 
But at the same time, like I say, box fighter, that old, you know, idiom, it kind of suits uh, Taylor, I think, very well. Because he, he doesn't mind having a row with you. But at the same time, um, you know, he, he, he can box. He's got very, very good skills. Very good skills indeed. Um, and he doesn't, when I say box fighter, it's not that he can box or he can fight. He can blend the two. Because some fighters can't blend the two. They can have a scrap and they can box when they want to. But you ask them to put it together and, you know, fight for certain in certain spurts and, you know, box in others. And, you know, and they kind of, they, they get caught between those two styles. With Taylor, it's very much blended together. Now, if you look at Lopez, I would say Lopez is more of a pressure fighter than Taylor. He likes to come forward and he likes to throw power shots. And he kind of got, well, he certainly got, he got found out against um, Cambosis because he just, it was, talk about Cavalier. I mean, this bloke was running, fighting with his face first, hands down, and he got floored in the first round by Cambosis, who's not a big puncher. Um mm. So he can be too cavalier and too um, too out there, too careless. Uh, Taylor, even against Cattrall, he just fought badly. It wasn't like he was necessarily being careless. He just didn't seem able to pull the trigger. Didn't he, 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 Surely he took him lightly because he just didn't seem to have the wherewithal to, um, to use his skills. It was almost like he couldn't get his engine going. You know, the, he was, the key was in the ignition. He was... And he flooded the engine, basically. And before you knew it, he lost the fight. Well, he didn't lose the fight, technically, but he, we all know he really lost the fight. With Cam, with Cambosis, uh, with Cambosis Jr., with Lopez, the one thing you can say about the Cambosis Jr. fight is that despite the fact the corner work by his father was absolutely atrocious, some of the worst corner work I have ever seen in a professional boxing ring, nevertheless, he had a massive gash across one of his eyes, um, you remember between the 11th and 12th round, uh, Lopez, horrendous gash, and he was standing up facing the corner, didn't even sit down, and someone was sort of flicking at it with a swab. And it, look, the corner work was just appalling, did absolutely nothing to, to, to stem the, the, blood, the, the blood flow. But Lopez did not stop fighting until the end. And even though it was by that point probably a lost course, he still tried. And I think Lopez deserves a lot of credit for, despite having all that appalling uh, work, uh, uh, corner work, despite being flawed, despite clearly taking Cambosis um, uh, lightly and not doing his homework and thinking he could blow him out of there in one or two rounds, he didn't quit. He kept on fighting. And that's what you want. So he is a fighter, Lopez. A come forward guy, yes, but not necessarily a front runner who's going to quit after you know, suffering some sort of, you know, knockdown or, you know, he's losing the fight, so he quits on his stool or he makes an excuse. He doesn't look for the door. He doesn't look for the exit. He looks to fight until the end. Um, but can he be outboxed? Yes, he can. And it, I think that Taylor will look to box uh, Lopez from the start. He will, it will be box, 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 you know. He'll, yes, he'll throw some, start throwing some power punches after a couple of rounds, but he's going to want to measure Taylor try to uh, measure Lopez, try to um, control the range. He's going to look to see how aggressive Lopez is. He's going to look to counter him at times. Um, whereas the flip side might be that Lopez will try to outwork Taylor. He'll try, he'll be throwing power punches because that's, that's his natural um, uh, fistic makeup, if you like. Um, he's going to be looking to hurt Taylor I think Taylor would benefit greatly from going to the body. Uh, well, I mean, ultimately, they both would. But I think Taylor, in order to, if if that is the case, and Lopez is coming for him and looking for him and looking to outwork him, body work should slow him down. On the other hand, Taylor's got a body too. Lopez would be well well advised to not just head hunt, sling a few punches to the body. You know, put the pressure, the controlled, consistent pressure on on Taylor. And also, let's not forget that, you know, Lopez can counter-punch well too. He can. Um, was it a counter-punch that put... Um, that put Comey on the floor? I can't remember offhand. I know he did Comey in two, in two rounds, but was, I want to say it was a counter-punch. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I think, I, I think this, this is going to be a very close, competitive fight. 
for about eight rounds. And then, in the last third of the fight, I expect to see Josh Taylor, his better technique as Lopez tires and Taylor maintains his technique, will probably pinch three of the last four rounds and will probably win Taylor a close decision. Close decision. 115, 113, that sort of thing. Could be a majority, could be a split decision, I don't know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that despite everything, despite the fact that this is only the second fight in two years for Taylor, despite the fact that he hasn't fought since the Cattrall debacle, um, despite the fact that he's away from home, he's in New York, Madison Square Garden, um, I'm going to say, um, I mean, I say away from home, of course, America is a continental-sized country, and Lopez, I think, is from California, so he might as, he might as well be away from home as well, but he's an American, so you can, you can say, OK, he's at home, technically. Uh, but I, I think that that Taylor's ring IQ, a little bit too much nous, maybe too much experience against high-level guys, even though Lopez has fought Lomachenko and Comey. I think overall, consistently, um, Taylor has fought terrific men. Lopez only had 19 fights himself. One defeat and the 18 wins, 13 by knockout. Um, Taylor, as we know, 19-0 at the moment, uh, 13 wins by knockout as well. Very, very evenly matched. Five foot ten Taylor uh, Lopez, I think, is uh, a bit short of five eight five nine. So I fully expect um, I fully expect this to be a very competitive fight, and I am picking Josh Taylor to very narrowly outpoint Teofimo Lopez. Like I say, one fifteen, one thirteen. I'm going to go for that. So what do you think? You leave your comments below. Please do. I always like reading them. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you could hit the subscribe button, that helps us a great deal, and hit the like button as well. Two thumbs up for that. Nice one. Um, yeah, like I say, thanks for your time as always. Looking forward to reading your comments. And uh, this is going to be a good one, I hope. I hope they won't cancel each other out. I don't think they will. I think it will be. It might be one of those intriguing fights that, that doesn't really catch fire but keeps you on, on tender hooks. You know what I mean? Anyway, comments below. I'll answer them soon. And yeah, bye for now.